All right, so here we are, starting lecture 1.1, the first one in our semester. This is for Math 135, and I'm your instructor, Tiffany Haler. All right, so let's take a look at the first thing. We're going to review sets and intervals. Okay, so just some notation real quick. These are the set braces. This little symbol here, E, means an element of. The way I remember it is, it kind of looks like the letter E. Okay, so this other symbol here. It's the element of, but we have a slash through it, so that means it is not an element of. We have taken it away. It's not an element. This other symbol here, the zero with the slash through it, is an empty set. So um, in this class, if you're used to using this symbol to mean zero, it does not mean zero. This means the empty set. So two very different things. All right, then we have this symbol here, union, probably familiar with that. So when I think of union, the word union makes me often think of the word for marriage. Okay, and we'll use this reference later on. Okay, so marriage, union, you bring everything together from both sides of the ceremony there. And then we have this other symbol here, intersection. Okay, if intersection, if union is like a marriage, to me, intersection is like a friendship. Okay, you share hobbies in common, but not your entire life. Okay, and we'll get to see an example of that right over here. Okay, so we have three sets. Set A, which contains 1 and 3, set B, which contains 1 and 5, and set C, which contains 0, 2, and 4. All right, so we have some questions here. So try and read off what this is asking us. Give yourself a second and see if you can find the answer. So this is saying, is 2 an element of A? So that means they're asking, is 2 inside of A? Let's take a look. No, the only elements in A are 1 and 3. So our answer to this would be no. So you could say 2 is not an element of A. So number 2. Find A, intersect B. Okay, so remember, we decided to say that intersection is like a friendship. It's the things that they share in common, like a hobby. So let's look at A and B. Do they share any numbers in common? Yeah, they do. They both share a 1. So A intersection B is going to be 1. All right. Next one. Find A union B. Okay, so union, union, we were thinking of marriage, which means everything, all the assets you have on one side and the assets you have on the other side, they come together. So A union B, on the other hand, means we're going to take everything from A and everything from B and put it together. So A union B is going to be all the terms from A and B. So we have one, well, B also has a one, and we don't need to repeat writing one, so we'll just write one once. And then the other element is a three and a five. Okay, so that was the union. Union means we bring everything together. Next one. Find A intersection C. So take a second, see if you can find what A intersection C is. Okay, so intersection, that's like a friendship. So we're going to look at what they have in common. Let's see, A and C. A has a 1 and a 3, and C has a 0, a 2, and a 4. Oh, you know what? They don't share anything in common. So there are two ways we can write our answer. We could say they don't have anything in common, so there's nothing inside of it. Or we could use the empty set. Um, we would not use this because, strangely enough, this set is not empty. This set contains the empty set. Okay, so either show your work with the empty set or the, the braces with nothing inside of it. All right, so example number one, we're going to look at a set builder notation. Okay, so just a different way to express the set. This says, express this set in set builder notation. Okay, so set builder notation is when we begin with a brace. So this is the set, that's how I'd read it, the set of x such that, okay, so that symbol means such that. Now let's take a look at these elements. What are in here? These are all integers, 
So negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. There are no rational numbers. So it's integers. So the set of all x, which are integers. But are these all the integers in the world? No, they just, it's negative 1 up to 2. Okay, so we're not continuing on into infinity. We just have these small four numbers here. So it's a set of all x such that these guys are integers and they are between negative 1 and 2. Okay, so the numbers that are integers, if you look on a number line, so for example, here's a number line. Negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So if we look at a number line, the numbers that I'm going to include here are these ones. None of the other numbers. No decimals or anything. All right, so now let's take a look at example number 2. Express the set of rational numbers in set builder notation. Okay, so we're not looking at a set number of numbers. We're looking at the whole rational numbers. Okay, so what does rational numbers mean? Well, if I look at the word ratio, or sorry, if I look at the word rational, I see the word ratio. So rational numbers are any number that can be written as a fraction. Okay, that would include numbers, so this is a fraction, 2 over 3. Um, 4 is also a rational number because I can make it a fraction by putting it over 1. Okay, so those kinds of numbers are rational numbers. So how would I do that? Well, I want the set of x such that x is an element of, and this is the symbol for rational numbers. This might be a reminder, or maybe it's new. Q is a set for rational numbers. Okay? So there we go. All x such that x is an element of rational numbers. Okay, and that would be a way to express that set in set builder notation. All right, so let's move on and take a look at intervals. All right, so we're asked to express this as an inequality and a graph. Okay, so two steps. We need to write it as an inequality, then a graph. And for me, I find it a lot easier if I graph it first, and then I write it as an inequality. So let's go ahead and graph this interval here. Okay, so I make my number line. Normally for me, I'm not too picky. I just indicate where zero is, and then I indicate my two endpoints. Okay, these points, the negative four and the half, those are like our boundary points. So I'll indicate those. We got the negative four and the half. Different instructors are, um, prefer you to write their graph a little differently this way. This is perfectly acceptable for me. You don't need to draw all the little tick marks out. Okay, so these are my boundaries. I'm going to draw a bubble for my boundaries. And I know that everything inside of these are part of my inequality. Now there's one last step. Notice, this is a bracket and that is parentheses. Okay, when you have a bracket, I think of a staple. You know, you're going chuk, chuk, you're stapling things together. So that means we're going to include negative 4 in our graph. So to include it, I'm going to color in the bubble, which means I include negative 4. But, see that parentheses here? That parentheses, I think of it as the opposite of being stapled. The parentheses is trying not to touch the half. So we're not including the half. And since we aren't including the half, we're going to leave that bubble open. Okay, so bracket, fill in the bubble, parentheses, leave it open. So once we've drawn the graph, it's easier to write this as an inequality. So for my inequality, I want all of the values inside here, whatever they are, let's call them x. And this, these values are bounded by a half and negative 4. They are less than a half, but not equal to a half. And they are greater than negative 4 but they could be equal to negative 4. So because of that, we're going to draw that little equal sign there. So greater than or equal to is from the bubble. We don't include the equal sign if it's an open circle. 
All right, so let's take a look at the next one. Same idea, I'm going to draw a graph first. So here we go. I have my 1.7. I'll indicate zero is over here. Oh, goodness. Infinity. I don't know how to indicate infinity. That's not actually a number. So how do I do that? Well, what I'm going to do, here is my boundary, 1.7. And I am not going to fill it in because it's a parenthesis. And infinity, infinity means it just continues to go on forever, to infinity and beyond. So to indicate that with my graph, I'm going to just go ahead, draw that line, and indicate with an arrow that it goes on forever. Okay, the arrowhead is really important. It lets me know that my graph doesn't stop at this point. It will continue on to infinity. Okay, so how do we write this as an inequality? Well, what this is saying, so all the values bigger than 1.7 are my x values, and they're going to be greater than 1.7, but not equal to. So I will not draw that little line in the bottom. Okay, so my, all of my values are greater than 1.7. Let's take a look at the next examples. Now these are interesting. So notice example number three, we just had one interval both times. For these examples, we have two intervals being either intersected or unioned. Ah, so a little more fun. Okay, so same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and graph first. So there we go. Oop, that was a little crooked. And I'll go ahead and just plot all of my points. Let's see, I have a negative 1, a 0, a 4, and a 6. And as usual, I don't really care too much to space them out accordingly. I just plop them down. So let's go ahead. I'm going to graph the first interval using blue. All right, so what is that? Um, go ahead and try graph this and see what you get. All right, so graphing this. They're both open circles because they're both parentheses. And right there, connect the line. So that's my blue one. Now let's go ahead and graph the other one. Let me pull out my pink. Yeah, here we go. And pink. What does this say? This is zero to six. Okay, I'm gonna float this one above the other one. Zero to six, and we stop at six. And are we including these numbers? Oh, yep, yeah, we are. Those right there are braces, so we're going to include these points. Okay, so now we have to figure out what the intersection of these two intervals are. Now remember, intersection means um, what they share in common. Okay, so think of friends. They all have a hobby in common or something. So the intersection is just where they intersect, which is this point right there. So that interval where they intersect is from zero. Now they both agree that zero can be on their graph. So we'll give zero a bracket. And then they go up to four, but the blue line says we can't take four, even if the pink line says it. So we have to go where they agree, so we're not gonna include four. Okay, so that right there is the interval in the simplest form. All right, let's go ahead and draw the next one. Okay, so same points we're using here. Negative one, zero, four, and six. Go ahead and see if you can graph those. Okay, so graphing this one again in blue. We don't fill in the bubbles because they're parentheses. We're not including those points. And then let's graph this one. Okay. Oh, well, we're gonna fill those in because we're including them. Uh -huh. Now, this time we are looking at union. Okay, union, think of marriage, take all the assets from everyone. So, even though the pink graph doesn't have these points in it, we're taking the union. So for example, if you're if people are getting married and one person has a dog, most of the times they don't get rid of the dog. They now both own the dog. Or if one person had a car, 
that car comes into the marriage. So for this, these points are going to come into the union all the way up. And even these points will come into the union. Okay, all of it comes together. So let's take a look at that. We start at negative one. We're not including it though. So open parentheses, negative one. All the way up to, oh, do we include four? Well, since four is on the pink graph, we are going to include four. So that's okay. So keep going until, oop, six. Do we include six? Yes, we do, because there's that filled in bubble. Okay, so that is it for page one. Let's take a look at the next page. Bring this down. All right, moving on. The definition of an absolute value. All right, so if A is a real number, okay, so we're looking at real numbers. Then the absolute value of A, we split it into this. So the absolute value of A is going to be the number inside if what's inside is positive or greater than zero. And if the number inside is not positive or greater than zero, so for example, if it's a negative number, we're gonna have to change its attitude, you might say. Take the opposite of it. And that's how we would change that piece. Okay, so let's take a look at example five. So, absolute value of negative four minus six. Okay, well I can subtract that. That's gonna be the absolute value of, well, negative four minus six is negative 10. Okay, so here we are. What is the A value? Our A value is negative 10. This is negative. So to drop the absolute value signs, what am I gonna use? this option. I'm gonna take the opposite of A. So we will take the opposite of negative 10. All right, so let's do that. The opposite of negative 10. And what's the opposite of negative 10? Oh, positive 10. And there we go. Let's erase this. All right, so let's take a look at B. Now this one's weird, because we brought in the number pi. So how am I gonna evaluate that? I can't subtract it like I did here. I could subtract the four and the six and get a negative 10. But I can't subtract the pi and six. So this is gonna take a little more um, thought. Let's see. What is the value of pi? Well, pi, we say it's approximately 3.14. So if I have 3.14 minus six, that number is gonna end up being a negative number. Right, because 3.14 is smaller than six. So we get a negative number. So that means that this value is negative. So the same thing that happened last time is if the value is less than zero, we need to take the opposite of it to get it out of the absolute value symbols. Okay, because remember, we're trying to get it out of the absolute value signs. Okay, so since it's negative, we're gonna take the opposite of pi minus six. And simplifying this, we're gonna use the distributive property. Okay, so we'll distribute the negative. That's gonna be negative pi. And then we have negative times negative six, which is gonna be positive six. We could leave it like that, or you could write it as six minus pi. Both of these are acceptable. Okay, so even though we couldn't actually evaluate what this was gonna be, we could go ahead and get a rough estimate of what the answer might be. Well, let's take a look at example number six. Use the definition to write the expression with out the absolute value symbols and then simplify. Okay, so the definition is basically asking us to look inside the absolute values and determine if this value is gonna be positive or negative. All right, so let's look at A. 